Hello and welcome to another TLDR UK video. A while ago we made a video examining the political compass, explaining how it worked and where the TLDR audience and team landed on the compass. At the time we were fairly critical of it, mainly due to the questions it asked and its apparent bias, but at the end of the video we asked you to take a look at the 8 values survey, which many say was an improvement of the political compass test. So with more than 12,000 responses, let's see what the 8 values test is like and how our audience and team scored. You might know this already, but we've just released the third edition of our book, Brexit the Colouring Book. The new edition features 25 images, taking you through the entire history of Brexit. So even if you're not into colouring, hopefully it's a nice read. It also comes with a QR code linking you to an exclusive TLDR video, so what's not to love? You can also get 25% off using the code 8. The link to the store is in the description. Let's start this video by explaining how the test works. Similarly to the political compass, the 8 values test asks you a bunch of questions which you have to agree, disagree or indicate no preference on. This last section is something the political compass simply didn't have, which made it particularly difficult for people who didn't really have a view on certain topics. The obvious downside with this button is that it allows respondents to avoid questions, and if people use it enough, then any placement becomes kind of meaningless. Anyway, in terms of the questions themselves, there are a few criticisms we could have made, but on the whole they're an improvement. The main criticisms we had with the questions in the political compass test were that there were too many non-political questions and that the test itself dragged people to the left. The 8 values survey has some questions we would reword, but on the whole they're more clearly linked to politics. Once you've completed the questions, the political compass puts each respondent on a chart, composed of two axes, social and economic left and right, whereas the 8 values survey has four axes. These axes are economic, diplomatic, state and society. So let's examine what they mean before we dive into the results. Those on the equality side of the economic axes believe that the economy should distribute value evenly among the populace. Those on the market side of the axis believe that the economy should be focused on rapid growth. So if you're on the equality side of the economic axis, it's likely that you support more socialist proposals. For example, higher tax rates for higher earners, more economic support policies, universal healthcare, etc. It's also likely that you believe in the nationalisation of key industries. Those on the market side of the axis would believe in, well, the opposite. They believe in more laissez-faire capitalism, where the government has minimal economic intervention. In contrast to those on the equality side, they'd also believe in greater privatisation. Moving on to the diplomatic axis, those on the nation side are patriotic and nationalist, while those on the global side are more cosmopolitan and globalist. So if you're on the nation side of the diplomatic axis, we'd expect you to believe in more aggressive foreign policy initiatives. For example, being a supporter of military intervention, expanding the military capabilities of the state, developing bigger and better weapons, etc. If you're on the globe side of the axis though, then you'd value being more peaceful, advocating for diplomatic options before agreeing to military intervention. Additionally, if you're on the global side of the axis, then you're more globalist, advocating for international cooperation more generally, with this often equating for strong support for international organisations such as the UN or EU. Next up is the state axis. For those on the liberty end of this, they'll believe in strong civil liberties, while those on the authority side tend to believe in strong state power. So respondents on the liberty side believe in more personal freedom and oppose the intervention of government into the personal lives of citizens. Their support for civil liberties could be demonstrated in a number of different ways. For example, through their support of a free and independent media or their support of the political opposition. Conversely, those on the authority side of this axis believe in a strong state, able to intervene in the personal lives of their citizens. They likely put less emphasis on civil liberties and may support policies that increase censorship or security at the cost of freedom. Finally, we have the society axis. Those on the tradition side believe in traditional values and strict adherence to a moral code. Those on the progress side believe in social change and rationality. Therefore, those on the traditional side of the axis are more likely to be religious, or at least derive their sense of morality from religions. 
People on this side of the axis are more likely to defend the status quo and be resistant to change in society. Those on the progressive side of the axis will be more likely to propose changes to the status quo. For example, perhaps putting an emphasis on LGBTQ plus rights or advocating for more environmental policies. And their morality is less likely to be derived from religion. So where does the TLDR audience fit on these scales? Well, it's clear that our audience is more left-wing, as our critics will no doubt use against us in the comments section. Let's take a look at each of the axes in turn though. Firstly, the economic axis. As you probably figured, the equality side is where you'd expect the left-wingers to land. And, well, 68.99% of our audience landed there. Effectively, more than two-thirds of our audience are economically left-wing. Moving on to the diplomatic axis, and confusingly, the right of this axis, the world side, represents the left-wing opinion. And for our audience, 66.19% of people find themselves on the world side of things. For the third axis, the liberty side is broadly the left-wing opinion, and 65.12% of our audience ended up on that liberty side. As you can see, a pattern is emerging here. On the last axis, again confusingly, the right side is the left-wing opinion, and of our audience, 71.25% seemingly subscribe to this left-wing, progressive opinion. As you can see from this graph, there's a bit of difference when it comes to age groups and their responses. As you can see, on the economic spectrum, potentially in contrast to what you might expect, the older respondents are slightly more equality-focused, the left-wing opinion. This doesn't necessarily translate into the other axes, but it's an interesting finding, and I'm sure some of you want to let us know your theories for why in the comments below. But this might not mean that our entire audience should be considered left-wing in the ways the Western world determines it, because the test has a vast array of questions on things like nationalism, authoritarianism, etc. For example, one question asked respondents whether they agree with the statement that the stronger the leader, the better. In democratic societies, irrespective of whether you consider yourself on the left or the right, you will likely disagree with this statement. In fact, the World Values Survey, which gauges people's, well, values around the world, asked a similar question. In the most recent survey, about 70% of respondents disagreed. In Iran, though, only about 45% disagreed. So, those that disagreed with this in the Eight Values Survey would not simply be considered left-wing in the UK. Rather, if they disagreed, they'd be simply demonstrating their support for the generally more left-wing and more liberal political system that we have in the UK. This indeed would be true for respondents not just in the UK, but from more liberal Western democracies. So while the argument could certainly be made that our audience are simply left-wing, it's probably best to take this with a pinch of salt, and as a demonstration that respondents from Western societies are more likely to be left-wing on a grander, more global scale. It's probably also worth bearing in mind that the point of this test, and indeed the political compass, is to get us away from thinking about politics in just left-right terms. While there are definitely going to be links between the left and right opinions on these axes, not everyone who subscribes to a left-wing opinion on one axis will agree with it on all axes. Nonetheless, this doesn't change the results. Many of our audience are left-wing, and perhaps you're happy about this. Perhaps you're not surprised, and maybe you're frustrated by it. Regardless, when it comes to Team TLDR, our responses broadly map with the audience. Our writers' responses fall within this range, with the bars representing our most extreme team members' opinion in either direction. Average it out, and you'll find our team rests about here. Which isn't surprising when you consider what our team does, their age, and their location, with a lot more of the left-wing responses corresponding with pretty neutral politics in the UK. Irrespective of this, let us know where you landed on the axes in the comments below, and what you think of your results. Also, if you haven't taken the test yet, it's not too late. We're still accepting submissions, and we're going to be using this data pool again. So if you want your views to be included in our audience data going forward, then take the test and submit your results by clicking the link below. Also, be sure to subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon to be notified every time we release a new video. Special thanks to our Patreon backers who make videos like this one possible. And if you want to see your name at the end of videos, then you too can back us on Patreon. The link to that is in the description.